moment of truth, people. My friends, we are done. Give me a few minutes, let me wash my hands and I'll show you what I've done. So let's go back to the beginning. The dawn of the universe, the Big Bang. Okay, maybe not that far. So, at the beginning you saw me digging with this bad boy, look at that. So, in my ignorance with these things, from my buddy Mark who You've seen on the earlier stages of this build, a dear friend of mine, and uh, he's an avid allotment guy, so he runs an allotment where he grows his own veg, etc. He's quite savvy with that stuff. And he educated me on my ignorance, on the difference between a shovel and a spade. In my ignorance, in my towny ignorance, I thought they were the same thing. They're not. So this is a shovel. It's a pointy edge, and these are designed for digging. And then you've got the spade, which is a flat bottom and that is move, uh, primarily used for moving material around, okay, which kind of makes sense, right? And obviously each one does both, but one is designed more than the other. So that was my first lesson in my ignorance. And this particular one is an Irish shovel. 
And the reason why it's called an Irish shovel is the extremely long handle. It's a beast. Now the quote unquote English British shovels are uh, a lot shorter. And that's what I'm kind of used to. I've never seen the handles this long. And what Mark educated me on and what I subsequently learned is that for, by having a longer handle, you get more leverage in terms of plowing it into the ground and being able to dig it. Um, and that once again makes sense. So this one I bought online, head is a bit bigger than the one my buddy Mark had, but that's what you get when you buy online. And it actually wasn't that expensive. Uh, but I go to a lot of kind of woodworking type affairs and um, I always see vintage ones, but I never know what I'm looking for. That is until now. So we'll be looking out for a vintage one of these. So this is an Irish shovel. So this made the digging a lot easier. So what did I dig? So here we have an archeological excavation. I uncovered the remains of viewers who've been watching my three hour long videos. They didn't survive, may they rest in peace. So, I didn't actually have to dig a huge amount in order to get down, probably about a foot. Um, and as you can see here, we're kind of uh, reaching the clay. So we have probably, I reckon about eight, eight inches of soil, top layer, and then we hit clay. And I don't know the kind of intricacies of the qualities of clay and the kind of differences between them, but this actually seemed to be pretty good uh, quality clay. Um, it was relatively pure, mix it with a little bit of soil. So this was the clay. Now luckily we've had a bit of rain um, kind of in between. Uh, and so this has kind of like made it a little bit damp, which makes life a lot easier when it comes to digging. A um, couple of things I've found with this is found, uh, hopefully you can see that in the camera, if that focuses, there look, flint. It's covered in clay, so you can't see it clearly. And there was loads of this, loads of flint. I've kind of piled it up over there to one side, um, but you don't need to worry in the UK, there's flint just everywhere, especially in this woodland. And obviously that'll be used for uh, future product, uh, projects. So there you go, dug up the clay, um, and yeah, that was really cool. Grateful, it's obviously right next to the base camp, so it makes life a lot easier. I did procure a couple of separate locations away from this woodland, should there not have been clay here, but thankfully the clay was here, it makes life a lot easier in terms of working with and just taking however much I need. And also the clay also works for future projects. I'm gonna build a pizza oven, a whole bunch of things. So there you go. So ne the next step was obviously to dig up the clay. So obviously once we dug up the clay, uh, then put it into one of these large flexi buckets to mix it in. So what I found after doing a few loads of these was a good mixture was about half full of the flexi bucket. I then put um, sand in. Okay, so you need builder sand, and then I'm mixing this straw here. Now the straw is from another part of the wood, and they've got a few kind of like straw hay bales, and I didn't even need to open up one of the hay bales. This was just little bits that were lying around. And crazy, I didn't actually need a lot of this stuff here. Now in terms of the mixture for the daub, it all varies. I've done a lot of research, and every single one varied like crazy. Um, typically, traditionally, for many hundreds, if not thousands of years, what they typically use is clay and animal dung. So things like horse dung, cow dung, goat dung, whatever dung you can get. Not sure about human dung. <laughs> Maybe, right? If they were pulled to a stretch. But typically they use dung. And the, uh, the dung uh, is kind of like the fibrous material which holds it together. So think about like fiberglass. It's the fiber within the glass mixture that holds it all together. So that is absolutely crucial. If you just put clay, it will just crumble and break. So by putting the straw in, um, and subsequently sanding. Um, sand, I saw a couple of professional guys here in the UK on, on YouTube that did it and they mixed sand. And these are guys who do it professionally, so I mixed in the sand. Um, and it seemed to work okay. So yeah, I found about half flexi bucket of clay, uh, the water, um, straw, and then the sand. Uh, and then kind of mix that all up. And then I found that by mixing the clay and the water first was good. Then obviously you can get it into a slurpy kind of mixture. Uh, and then just add in one thing at a time. And there you go. So in total, I used about seven of these. So seven kind of like, I say about two thirds full. I didn't fill it all the way to the top because it, it becomes very heavy and very difficult to move. And because it's a flexi bucket, if you fill it rear, near the top, as you're moving it, it will just spill over. So that's why I eventually filled it up about two thirds of the way. And I mixed it all in using my primitive digging stick that I made ages ago in the video. Um, and there you go. So. Let's see the finished article. So here you go. You have the finished product. 
Now obviously it's needless to mention this is not supposed to be a work of art. This is just supposed to provide a functionality and the functionality being filling up the gaps in between the upright beams. So I haven't done the, um, the other side. There was no need to. And what I've done here is the back wall is where I started off first. And all I've done is I've left a tiny level at the top, if you can see here. Now the reason why I've done that is because when I light a fire in the shelter, the fire pit is gonna go here and the fire is gonna hit just the top here when I put the roof on. And so most of the smoke is gonna go out. However, just a tiny bit will obviously seep in. And so what I needed was a layer at the top here for it to escape through. On the sides, what I did was I only done the bottom layer. Now you're probably asking why. The reason being why, twofold. Number one, like I mentioned, we're letting the smoke out. And secondly, light, to let a bit of light in. Because what I found was, if I covered the whole thing, although it blocks off um, all the gaps, it, it kind of gets really dark in here as well. So I just decided for now to leave this open and just kind of cover the bottom part so that's what I've done. And there you go. That is the finished product. So now I can say the sides are officially done. Monitor this over the next couple of months. If I need to make tweaks and changes, then obviously I'll do that. Uh, but for now it's done. So what is next? Next, we're gonna be building the bed, then after that, the roof. And so we're making very good progress now on the rest of the shelter. And as I've mentioned, we got the clay here now, so obviously for future projects such as a pizza oven and whatnot, uh, primitive pottery is something I really want to be trying. It's good to know that we've got a good source of clay here. And finally, it's worth mentioning, I'm in the process of talking to one or two people that are professional wattle and daub uh, practitioners. And so I'm in the early stages of speaking to them and hopefully do a tutorial with them when uh, circumstances permit and to see how it's actually done properly. I think it's going to be a good learning experience for me and for yourselves by also documenting it on video. So there you go guys, as always I really do appreciate you watching. I'm chuffed now that this bit is done and I can progress now with the rest of the build. Like I've mentioned, this is not supposed to be you know, aesthetically pleasing looking, it's supposed to provide a functionality of sealing up the gaps predominantly in the shelter. So now as we approach the colder period of the year, I could hopefully stay a bit warm <laughs> inside the shelter. So there you go, really appreciate you watching. And as always, I hope whatever you're doing, you have a blessed day, a blessed week ahead. This is Zed from Zed Outdoors. Peace out.